34,100 miles and I got an engine light. Can't wait to get back home to see what this thing is. Got my trusty scanner. I knew it. <laughs> Hybrid battery pack, state of charge high. Erase. Yes. Code has been erased. Will it stay erased? I drove it for a while. I mean, what is that? A voltage regulator? Pro oh, yeah, we got a problem. Okay. We have issue. So I got a battery pack code before. The truck kind of sits. Not a lot, but enough because I work remote, so it doesn't get driven very often. And last time I got an error code, I can't remember what it was. I put this a trickle charger on this battery and it fixed it for a long time so I'm using this charger and if you can see it's kind of light out here there it goes the light is flashing pulsing flashing it means it's below 75% when I char started charging it it's hard to see with the camera anyway it's slowly pulsing red which means the battery was 75% below its charge level. I think this is the issue. So what I've learned is if this is weak, that will get damaged. The 48 volt battery in the back of the truck, the hybrid battery will get damaged because the 12 volt battery is weak. You need this stuff to be top quality, maintained well, and you just gotta be on your game because these trucks are always consuming electricity, even when parked. So the longer they sit, the worse things get. So it's so important to have a good battery up here in the front, the 12 volt, that has a very high reserve capacity so it can withstand that kind of drainage. Especially for someone like me who works from home and I don't drive my truck as much as some people. I wouldn't know it with 34,000 miles on the odometer, but hey, when I do drive it, I drive it. All right, we'll let that sit. I'll be back, I'll let you know what happens. So it's been on the charger, trickle charger. I know it's a trickle charger, it's slow, but I just don't want to break stuff. But it's been on there for a few hours now and it shows it's still below 75%. So it makes me think the battery maybe is not able to hold a charge or it's slowly in decline. The Noco Genius One has a one amp capability. I switched from 12 volt over to AGM, which is what this battery is, and it seems to be charging a little quicker. I think this represents it's charging, but it's above 75% now. So we're coming up and maybe soon we'll give it a start. See if that light goes off the engine light, the air light. I'm still going to get a new battery though, before winter, probably today. Relatively speaking, I've been driving this thing on a semi-regular basis, not a ton, but enough that this battery shouldn't be dying like that. Currently shows I'm at 100% charge. It should be fine. But the fact that it keeps dying, this is the second time it's done this. I'm going to go buy a new battery. Get rid of this one. Everybody online says these are junk. The dealer, when I called the first time this happened, said these were junk. I said, you're going to replace this one with this one? Under warranty. And uh, she said, yeah. And I said, you just said it's junk. <laughs> Why would you do that? So she said, why don't you come in and talk to a deal, uh, talk to one of the shop people. I, I don't need to do that. She also threatened, she said, if you replace it with anything other than this one, you'll destroy your truck. That's not true. So I'm going to go ahead, go pick up a new one. I just got to yank this one out for the core and I'll be right back. First of all, though, before I take this off, let's see if the light goes off. Ram. Yes. Ooh. State of charge low. It's the opposite. This is the one I had before. Interesting. So let's try clearing the DTC. Yes, please. The race was successful. Okay. We have no light. It did not come back on. This shows me that the low 12 volt battery is the problem most likely and the trigger for the issues with the hybrid battery. I'm gonna go get a new battery.
and hopefully that helps me get rid of this ongoing issue. All right, definitely the battery. I'm gonna bring this in, return it, we'll get a new one. All right. Water trapped here and here. I might drill a tiny hole to help that drain out. I'm gonna drill a little hole here and drain this out. Low spot. I think that makes sense. Wait, is there metal under it? Or is that hollow? Hang on, let's check. There is fender under it. But it's not dead up against it. But gotta be careful, cause man, that's thin, thin fender well. Super thin. Man, I don't like this. Going slow, don't want to damage. Good gook. Oh, we're through. Oh, we're through, we're through. I did not puncture the fender well underneath. Thank you, Lord. Look, no more water. <laughs> now he's got to keep that clear of debris. That's through. Drainy drain. Oops, through. Up oh, through, through, through. Okay. And it drained. Nice. Can't put a new battery in old dirt. All right, that's pretty spotless. I think it's worthy of a new battery. Here we go. So I got the Everstart. And let me tell you why. I put a Die Hard in our van, it's great. But I was reading the reviews online, and they said the Die Hard, a number of them, died inside three years. They have a three year warranty, replacement warranty, that's great. This has the same specs, but it has a four year warranty. Figured I'd go with this one, it was $50 less. All right, does the blanket fit? Yes, the blanket fits. Look at that. All right, and we're live. Or is it Memorex? All right, plug back in nice and secure, batteries down. I'm pretty sure this is gonna fix the issue. Question is now, Will this avoid the error codes coming up as often as they do, or maybe cure it entirely? Time will tell. So no error codes. Everything looks great. Putting a new battery in a Ram 1500, a new Ram 1500, by default, should just be the first thing you do when you get it home. <laughs> Save yourself some trouble.
All right, that's that. Look, if you get a POC3O error code in your Ram 1500, you probably need a new battery. You probably need a new battery anyway. It's best just to replace that thing. But still loving the truck.